What's up, everyone? If you like the content, smash that like button. If you really like the content, please subscribe. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Smash Cannabis. Hey, each and over channel, so if you're not channel, we gotta go. If you are, how you doing? Smash that like button and subscribe. I'm just gonna do two minutes, talk about a, a little story I've had, I've had on the back burner. Um, I'm going on... I'm in my fifth year. I'll be going on six years sober. Um, it took me a while to finally get clean. But along the road, I've seen a lot and done a lot. So, at one point in my life, I moved down to Broward County, Deerfield Beach, Florida. And I learned... So, I went down there for a program... Um, a rehabilitation program. Um, it was a good program while it lasted. Um, but then, once you get off and into like the Florida recovery scene, there were so many sketchy little out outlets. It was crazy. Um, we're gonna talk about one. So. In Florida, they had these kids called marketers. Marketers were people that recruited addicts that needed help into these programs. But the fucked up part about it is they were paying addicts to go to programs. So I was getting... I was going like they were they were continuously paying people to get high and go into rehab, get out, get money, spend the money, go back in and it was just a big insurance scam because all of it ran off private insurance. So they signed a tax form with these places and then these places would pay them whatever sum of money the total was for whatever it is, detox. They would the marketer would pay the client $500 if they lasted seven days without getting in trouble or kicked out. Now, that ramped up if you were dedicated and wanted to do a 30-day program. They were willing to give you $2,000 to $2,500 cash when you got out. Now, the tricky part about it was finding a marketer that you could trust because most of them were addicts. That either, excuse me, still got high or didn't care. Um, did steroids. Like, it, it was always someone that was all messed up, all, too. And it wasn't helping them, clearly, because they were making money to just send people. They were sitting at their house sending people to rehab, still getting high, because they never drug tested these people, and they didn't care who they got sent. So even down there, like, there was halfway houses that would pay you to stay there because they were making money off your insurance. It was one big insurance scam. It was intense. Like, you didn't need money to pay rent. All you had to do was have private insurance and you can find somewhere to stay like that. Literally like that. I could call one place and be like, hey, you guys take private insurance? Yep, okay, I'm coming. Um, and most of the time, it was a flop house that didn't care if you were getting high or not. They just wanted the money off your insurance, the drug tests, the, the fake programs. They would, send, they would send you these programs that were bullshit, fake. Like, they got raided. It ended up getting all these places. And they, um, Florida started to make a sober task force. So all these places ended up getting raided or shut down or whatever they ran. A couple people got arrested for some real real fucked up shit. It was like the Wild West down there. It was crazy. So once everyone started to get raided and stuff, I was I was listening to it and people were messaging me and stuff because they still had people down there. And um, my buddy's like, oh, I'm going to Southern California. I'm like, why? He's like, oh, we're going to do the same thing down there. Um, my buddy signed a... I think it's a W-9 with a company there, so we're all going to go there and do the same thing. So, the whole, like, and it wasn't just him, everyone found out about it. So, the whole scene trans transitioned to Southern California, and people were getting sent to Southern California. It was crazy, because when you were in Florida, like, you would be um, 
Deerfield Beach, Del Rey, and it was mostly tourists or people in recovery down there. There wasn't many Floridians. It was pretty, pretty crazy, actually. And the other thing is, um, a lot of the people that opened up these halfway houses kind of just had, like, a house in the middle of the hood. Um, literally, it was the middle of the hood. So you would walk outside, and there was people selling drugs on the street. Two houses up that way, three houses this way. There was four more sober houses that way, maybe one more this way. It was crazy. There were so many people trying to get money off of addicts, and no one was getting help. That was the shitty thing. Like, you found a couple people that didn't fall into it, but most people down there, like addicts, the mind mentality, they went down there so fresh, they're like, fuck, I can get paid to go to these programs now. And it just didn't help anyone, period. Like... The person getting high, or person getting people in, or the person getting high never really got the help they needed. Um, it was just a continuous cycle of losing money, because everyone always had the plan, I'll get out, and I'll save this money, and then I'll, I'll start over. But it always ended up in a cycle. You always ended up broke. It was ridiculous. And these people tried to pressure you to go in, because they couldn't find someone that day. <clears throat> and they know you've already done it, so you know what to do. It was it was a crazy time. So yeah, um, that's my Florida story. Getting paid to go to rehab. Um, if you like this series, little series of me talking about like history or my history and stuff, stuff that I've I've seen or gone through, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You guys have a good day. All right.